Yeah. One guy that I can really see myself drafting a lot of rookie drafts this year that I'm really excited for is Texas's Jonathan Brooks. I'm six foot, 207 pound. He was a redshirt sophomore this year, four star prospect and the former number 25 running back in his class. The only thing that you got to worry about with Jonathan Brooks is that ACL tear that he experienced this year. Um, had to sit a little bit behind B. John Robinson. I mean, that's understandable. He's B. John Robinson. Um, but when Jonathan Brooks came in, he played really, really well. And I liked a lot of what I saw for Jonathan Brooks. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is his patience and vision. And I loved his patience and vision. Um, I felt like while, while there were some times where I would feel him dancing behind the line a little too much, he wasn't true as north and south a runner as maybe a Jace McClellan where he would just see the hole and hit the hole. He he did that a lot still. Like he he got what was blocked for him and he had the ability to create on his own, um, which Jace McClellan didn't. And I, I love that about Jonathan Brooks. I think his patience, his vision um, behind the line of scrimmage to find the right hole was really well, uh, was really good. Um, what did you guys notice about this for Jonathan Brooks? Yeah, I thought he was really special in this regard. He um... – like you said, like he dances around the line, but you know, he kind of mimics the way beyond bell type where he's kind of like juking back and forth behind his guard to, you know, kind of get the defender going one way so he can exploit the hole on the backside. Um, that's just all over his tape. And he, he has that vision to, you know, where he's actually playing chess back there, you know, he's setting up defenders, you know, making them go one way. So his pulling guard can get to him. Um, and then he cuts back to the, you know, backside hole. It was really fun to watch. Uh, There's like one time watching the tape where I'm like, oh man, I think he hit the wrong hole on that. And I watched it back again, slowed it down. And I was like, oh, I see what he did. Cause he, the defender ended up getting outside leverage really quickly. So, and he recognized that and then cut it back inside. Um, so I, I thought he had, this is probably his best attribute, which is saying something. We're just saying something because he's got one really good one that we're going to talk about next. But what about you, Cooper? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought it was controlled dancing. It wasn't the type of dancing that you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm making these unnecessary cuts that are getting me into trouble because I'm just guessing. Like, no, he he was really intentional with his footwork. Uh, he was controlled. He had the juice in his legs mm -hmm. to make – multiple cuts in a row so uh you can jump cut to the left to side step this guy and then cut back to the right and it, he was it was really dynamic it wasn't like let me just run straight forward until i find contact and then go down it, it was very much playing around with rushing lanes and playing around with defenders in their gap integrity and there was there you know, was no and, wasted, there wasn't wasted movement right there was like one play that and sorry to cut you off there but there's one play where I watched him jump cut two times behind the line of scrimmage he jump cut into a lane that lane filled with a linebacker then he jump cut out of that into an open lane and ran for like ten yards so like there's no wasted movement when it comes to Brooks he he he's a guy that can create on his own right he doesn't necessarily need the blocking there all the time yeah there were a few plays I noticed in particular where it was like somebody was unblocked in his face in the backfield and he accelerated away from them just enough to make that guy miss, but still stayed in control enough to make a cut and get it. It was, it was like the processing of, okay, I'm still, I'm running away from this guy, but it's not a panic run because I'm still seeing the field in front of me and I'm still in control enough of my footwork to make the next guy miss. He's thinking three steps ahead. And yeah, it, it was it was fun to watch him process at the line of scrimmage on the second level. Uh, his his the game wasn't too fast for him, and his feet were fast, but they weren't getting ahead of where his mind was going either. For sure, one one trait that he had, you know, Cooper, I'm surprised or uh, Rupert, I'm surprised to hear you say patience and vision was his best trait because I think elusiveness was his best trait. Uh, Coop, you sent us a video in our group chat about him just absolutely destroying a guy on a dead leg in one of your games. And that wasn't the first time I saw that. Like, I, I, I saw him do that several times in the game film that I watched, uh, both against Houston and um, against Oklahoma, just dead legging people out of nowhere, um, really breaking people down in the hole well. I mean, he was, he was very elusive to, to jump cut, break tackles. I mean, this was this is what I felt like was his best trait. Uh, what did you guys think about it, Cooper? Yeah, I definitely 
saw the same thing. Like you mentioned that that one clip I sent you, like the the line opened him up to the second level. He gets to the second level one on one with a linebacker, and he gave him just this nasty little double dead leg. It's like he gave one dead leg, and then the defender reacted to that. He gave another one going the other direction, and the the defender did not even get a finger on him. And he and he didn't just make the cuts; he exploded out of the cuts. So you know that's I think a huge um, benefit is when a guy doesn't get slowed down trying to make those cuts, but he can actually accelerate through the cut and keep his momentum. That was something I thought Jonathan Brooks did really well, and he did it in very short areas. So Jonathan Brooks had incredible uh, ability in a phone booth where, okay, I've only got a yard to try to make this guy miss because other guys are closing in, and all he needed was that yard. It didn't take him like 10 different stutter steps to try to make a guy miss. It was it was quick. It was like, boom, boom, I'm gone. And that's what I really like about it. You mentioned it. I mean, he, it felt like he didn't lose any speed when he was cutting. Um, he stayed at top speed the entire time. And that's a rare trait because we watched a lot of guys not have the ability to do that. So, I mean, yeah. that, that's something that you love to see. He's got so much juice in his legs, um, the power he has, and – there's a like a lot of players can try that way beyond bell, like wait behind the line, but you got to have the juice to put your foot in the ground and accelerate, you know, five yards up the field and the blink of an eye. And he's got that kind of juice to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, that applies to his lateral ability. Looks like he has really fluid hips as well to be able to make those moves. Yeah. It was really, really fun to watch. Speaking of, and he, he 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 didn't just do it on that level too. He was also a very powerful runner. We alluded to this while talking about Jace McClellan, but how many times did you guys see Jonathan Brooks run and run? He gains about seven or eight yards. He gets gang tackled by like three or four people, and he's carrying them an, addi- an additional four or five yards. I mean, I, I felt like I watched that happen over and over and over again. I mean, this guy runs with low pad level. He runs with great power. Um, for his size. I mean, I love his power and contact violence. I mean, this was another, I know we're, it feels like we're just giving him all the good stuff, but I loved, I love this area when I, when it came to his game too. What about you, Rupert? He has the disgusting stiff arm. I, I think there was like four where he just like demolished a guy on a stiff arm. Um, my favorite play from watching him, uh, it wasn't a touchdown run, but it was pretty darn close. He ended up getting to the second level and there's a safety there and he just stiff arms them, throws them to the side and then gets 30 yards after contact, like with a guy like hanging on him. It, it was very reminiscent. Uh, you'll notice play uh, Coop when Cam Newton carried a Bucks defender on a quarterback run for like 49 yards. He ended up carrying them for like 15 yards into the end zone. It was pretty much like that. He's just like carrying a dude on his arm and, you know, runs for 30 extra yards. Um, and another play, like in the first game I was watching of him, um, I made a note that like he just seems like one of those guys that's just going to have a nose for the end zone. Um, it was, you know, play there at the 10 or 12 yard line and he cuts the outside and there ends up being like three defenders there pretty much ready to stonewall him into the end zone. He's like, I don't care. He goes right through them all. And I was just like, I like this guy. (laughs) <laughs> he, he's really plays with a lot of tenacity. Yeah, I felt like his elusiveness actually led directly into his power because when you're shifty and you're always left and right and a guy can't get you square, you know, what you want to do as a running back, when you're, di- when you're dipping your pads, you want to pop him right on the outside shoulder. You don't want to pop him in the middle of the chest because he's square up and you're, you're, you might drive him back a little bit, but if you pop him in the shoulder, that's going to kind of turn him. And now he's only got half of his power to tackle you. Um, so you're, you're kind of taking one side of him. And that was something that I saw Jonathan Brooks do a lot was he, he would get on one side, the left or the right, pop the guy right in the shoulder, turn him sideways. And then the only thing that that guy could do is kind of hop on his back. And that's where you see Jonathan, jo- Jonathan Brooks just start to drag guys. And so, yeah, pretty consistently, I, I made multiple notes in my two games um, where it, it wasn't like he would break the tackle outright and just leave the guy laying on the ground and run and and run past him, but he would just get 
it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to fall forward for a yard or two. It was like, I'm dragging guys for eight yards yeah. after the contact. And that, that was pretty fun to see. I, I thought he had consistently good pad level. He always, like, he, he was a tall guy. He's listed at six foot. And it felt like he was really upright for a lot of his run. So but six, as soon foot as might be, knew, six foot might be selling him short a little bit. I think he might be a little taller than that, but we'll see. Yeah, he, he, he looks tall. But, you know, the point is he looked like he was running a little bit upright until the moment that that contact was about to come. And then consistently you saw the pad level go down, and he always finished his runs with a pop. So you love to see that. For sure. And kind of just wrapping up here, I mean, his third down skill set. Um, specifically, I want to talk about his pass catching. Because one of the plays I think is epitomizes his his third down skill set, his pass catching. I was watching him come out of the backfield. Um, he runs a little wheel route, and um, the ball is thrown to him, and he jumps up in one like in the air, catches it with one hand, kind of turns and like cuts up field for like a ten yard gain. I mean, he just looks natural catching the ball. I mean, I watched him line up in in the slot, in the outside. He he can run decent routes. He's not just running those wheel routes, those you know, straight up turnaround hook routes. I mean, he's running pretty defined routes. I mean, I loved him as a route, route runner. Um, and then as, when it comes to his pass blocking, I thought he, he did well in his pass blocking reps that I saw. I didn't see him really whiff on any pass blocking refs in the film that I watched. So I think he's got the third down skill set that's going to make him a really good PPR back um, in your fantasy leagues this year. Yeah, so this was his best year catching the pass, and he had 25 catches. Um, which is not a ton. I mean, he played 10 games because he did have the injury. So 25 catches. It, it wasn't something he was asked to do a ton. I did not really see him out there running routes like like what you just said. I, I really I saw a few wheel routes. Um, and then otherwise it was mostly just dump offs, screens, check downs. That was pretty much – I didn't see any angle routes. I, I didn't see really anything other I saw, than – I saw an out route. I saw some in routes. I saw a Texas route. Okay. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see any of that uh, in the games that I watched. But what I did see was that when he was targeted, it, it looked really natural, really smooth, definitely a hands catcher. He he looked like he he had it in the tank, definitely like pass fail. He's, he's passing – the, the test and he was dangerous after the catch. Um, so, you know, all that elusiveness that we already talked about definitely came into play after receiving the catch. And I had a number of positive pass pro um, notes on him too. I thought he did a really good job kind of standing his ground, picking up the blitz when he needed to, to pick up the blitz, give, give viewers enough time to get a pass off or, or scramble away so yeah, I, I thought overall third down skill set. While he it wasn't like, oh man, this guy's a weapon. This no. is like a Jameer Gibbs, Christian McCaffrey. Like I didn't I didn't come away feeling like that at all. But I felt like, yeah, this guy's very capable. He's not gonna have to come off the field in these situations. So overall, I think between his size, uh, his ability to run between the tackles and what I saw uh, in the third down skill set. I think he's got probably the best chance out of anybody we've studied so far to be a three down back at the NFL level. Do you, do you yeah. agree? Do you think the same thing, Rupert? hundred um, he, percent. He's, I, I saw the same thing that uh, Coop saw. Like I didn't see a ton of different routes, um, but I made the exact same note. Like he looked natural, like hands catching it. Um, there's like one wheel route where it was kind of thrown away from him a bit, a little more difficult catch. And he kind of made it look easy, which I really like to see. Um, and, you know, like once he gets the ball in his hands, like on a little wheel route against a cornerback, like good night. He, he buried a guy with a stiff arm on uh, one of the reps I saw. So uh, he has the skill set to do it uh, exactly like Cooper. Like I don't see him being like a, you know, 60, 70, 80 yard or 80 like catch guy a year, but you know, I think he can do, you know, three down skill set could be a workhorse back. So he's a guy I'm going to be targeting pretty heavily in drafts this year. So let's address the elephant in the room. I think the only weakness that we really see that could be a potential problem is that ACL tear this year. Now he's had some time to recover from that and ACLs aren't nearly as serious as they were years ago. 
Um, but are we worried about that ACL tear? I mean, when, when do you see his projection? Because I could see him being a day two guy. I could see him being a guy that I get in the top of my second round rookie drafts. I mean, I, I liked a lot about what I saw about Jonathan Brooks, but there's that ACL tear that lingers over him. Where are you, where are you guys taking him right now? Well, he tore his ACL in November. So this isn't like, you know, we had concerns about Tajay Spears last year because he had in extensive injury history with his knees, but they were past injuries. This is more like Jameson Williams when he was drafted and he had to miss almost his entire rookie year. You know, so that that's a big deal to me. I mean, you've you've seen not that I mean there might be multiple reasons. <laughs> there are multiple reasons why Jameson Williams uh, has not panned out so far. Um, I mean, you got the injury, you got the suspension, um, the emergence of Amon Ross St. Brown. There's a, there's a ton of factors, but like they traded up to get him in the first round, but he missed all of training camp. It just it just led to a really slow start to his career. Um, I'm I'm just really curious. He's not going to be able to do any of the the pre draft. Uh, you know, he's not going to be able to participate in the combine, wasn't able to participate at the senior bowl. Um, so there's some concern, I guess, in my mind about how will this affect the draft capital? Because if he falls to day three and then the team's not super invested in him and then he misses all of training camp, like there's just risk that it presents that I, I really wish wasn't there because if I knew like, OK, he's fully healthy, I'm looking at this tape. He's clearly in the conversation for RB1 of the class if, if he's healthy and he doesn't have that concern hanging over his head. And so we know that running backs typically come back from ACL and they're fine. Um, maybe a little dip in production the, the first year after they come back, but then year two after the ACL tear, they usually are, are back to their, their normal selves. So, yeah, I think he'll make a recovery. I hope a team is invested enough to be patient and that he eventually gets that opportunity. Cause I think he's a really, really good running back. Um, and really the only conversation for me is, is he my RB one or is he my RB two? Cause you know, we all love Bucky Irving. Um, I was about to do an experiment with you guys. And I think I'm going to do it right now. I want y'all to rank these running backs blindly right now. Um, out, out of guys we've studied so far, right? Bucky Irving. Um, of course, um, I'm blanking right now. Hold we on. talk Bucky about Trey Irving. Benson. Yeah, Bucky Braden Irving. Allen. Bucky Irving, Blake Corum, and Jonathan Brooks. How are you guys ranking those three guys right now? Because I would assume they're all kind of in the same tier right now or close to close enough to each other. Where do you guys rank those three right now? I think yeah, I'd I still go like Bucky Irving, Irving as one, uh, Brooks two, and Corum three. I – I'm really torn right now, honestly, on the Irving Brooks thing. I, I think Brooks would be my RB1 if he didn't have the ACL hanging over his head um, just because he he does have uh, – I mean, look, we've seen over the last few years there have been more and more small guys succeeding. But I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Bucky's listed 195, but if he came in and weighed at 185, it wouldn't shock me. I mean, he looks small on film. Uh, and so that, that's a concern I'm hearing round three at best on Bucky Irving. Now, who knows if that's true? Um, so really like the, these two guys draft capital and landing spot is probably going to break a tie for me. Cause I love both of the running backs and I know that's a cop out, but I, I really do love both Brooks and Irving. And to me, Corum, I, I believe he's my RB three right now, but he's not in the same tier as those other two guys. He's. He's a tier below them for sure. All right. Well, that about does us for tonight.